Hey there once again YouTube. Ben Ferriolo is back once again and I just want to let you guys know just real quick on my website I did finally get that blog post up under the seismic events menu under by location on the Hawaii page. It's the most recent post for the June 25th through 26th 2019 spasmodic tremor events in Hawaii. It's been a while since we've seen really any spasmodic tremor event but around June 25th through the 26th we did see an emergence uh, it took a while to get this blog post up because there's a problem with the server or something was going on, but it finally got fixed and so I finally got the blog post up. It includes seismic audio of these events as usual, so go check that out if you want. I'll try to leave a link it, uh, to it in the description box below when I upload this video. Let's go to latest earthquake, shall we? Now starting off, in this video I want to talk about the recent large volcanic eruptions that have been occurring along the Ring of Fire, primarily along this side of the Ring of Fire, right? Because the Ring of Fire goes from basically right down here, all the way around, all the way down here. So basically it's the whole left section of the Ring of Fire that's been seeing some pretty large volcanic blasts from 40,000 feet all the way up to 63,000 feet. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. That's just been in the past week or so, which is very interesting. But first, let's zoom in. We noticed we have an earthquake being reported for North Korea. I was like, oh great, they're testing another nuclear device. Lovely. But they, their nu nuclear tests usually occur up in this location where there are uh, much less people than there are down here. Look where this occurred. Let's turn on terrain real quick. Just south, southwest of Pyongyang, which is the capital of the communist country North Korea. There's the DMZ right there, and here's South Korea right down here, and there's Seoul. Yeah, so just south-southwest of Pyongyang in North Korea, we had a magnitude 3.8, supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth. I do not believe the depth is correct on that one. Uh, so very interesting, guys. Very interesting, because they usually do not test nuclear weapons right near their capital. They never, ever do that. So I don't know, maybe it was some type of accidental explosion, because the waveforms look kind of weird. Let's just take a look at this from the closest seismic station which is the INCN, which resides, I believe, in, what was that? I believe in South Korea. South Korea, I believe, here, why don't we go take a look at this just real quick. Yes, here's the closest seismic station to the magnitude 3.8 in Pyongyang, North Korea. Here's the station right here, INCN, in the IU network, just right near Seoul in South Korea. Let's take a look at the 3.8 in the seismic program swarm. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with the most recent data, well, kind of most recent, from INCN and the IU network. 10 location code broadband vertical. I have placed a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power because it is a broadband station, broadband channel, excuse me. And this earthquake, 3.8 in Pyongyang, North Korea, occurred at 619 UTC on the 27th. You can see the station again was right down here, so it is some distance away, right? It is a good amount of distance away, so the PNS wave arrivals will be sort of separated, a lot more separated than if we had a station right at the epicenter. But we see it right here, the background noise. This is all background noise. I don't know how it's this strong, but uh, <laughs> apparently it is. But we see the magnitude 3.8 right here. Clear PNS wave arrival separations, but, and I mean a big but. Now we see... I believe these are the surface waves right here. I believe these are the surface waves because of how far away it was. But right here, we should see the PNS wave arrivals, right? Well, look, P, S, and then it diminishes. And then what's this? There's a third increase in, in energy. That's odd. Because usually with earthquakes that include surface waves, usually see, we see a uh, P and S wave arrival and surface waves. Now, I'm not a professional by any count. So... But still, I, I don't know. This is a very, very strange earthquake. And it occurred in North Korea, just south-southwest of Pyongyang. Very strange, guys. Maybe an accidental explosion of some sort. But I've looked all, the, all over the news. And whenever earthquakes occur in North Korea, usually they have a news report about it. You know, just in case if it's a nuclear test or something. Nothing. Complete and utter silence all over the media. Even... Even alternative media sources aren't even talking about this earthquake. So, I don't know. It's a very strange location for an earthquake, guys. So, was this an earthquake or was this possibly a nuclear explosion or some type of accident? I don't know. But it's strange how there's two increases of energy, excuse me, after the P wave. So, it should be P, S, and then surface waves later on, right? But we see P, P wave, S wave, and then some other wave increase right there. 
Huh. That is very strange, isn't it? Going to the spectrogram, we see normal high range frequencies. It's hard to see with the how strong the background noise is. But it, to me, it looks like a normal tectonic event, but the waveforms are strange. So, magnitude 3.8, south southwest of Pyongyang. Now let's move on to the main course of this video. So here we are at volcanodiscovery.com slash volcano underscore news.html. I'll leave a link to this in the description box below. Very good place to get uh, updated information about plume heights, how large volcanic eruptions are, uh, recent ones. Now this is from June 25th. I have expanded this a lot and here's the most recent up here. But I just want to go through this since the 25th. Look at how large some of these eruptions are. Here, we'll go through it. Now, first off, the Raikoke volcano, which I believe resides between the northern tip of Japan and the southern tip of eastern Russia. Some of their islands right there. It's right on the border right there, I believe. Uh, they had a volcanic eruption on the 25th up to 38,000 feet. That's pretty impressive, guys. That's pretty impressive volcanic eruption. Scrolling up. We had a Reventador volcano, which I believe is in South America, I believe. Up to 17,000 feet. Not too bad. Let's look at some of the more major ones. Uluwun, yeah, we'll talk about Uluwun in just a second. Sabakaya Volcano, 25,000 feet. Sange Volcano, 19,000 feet. That's not too, too crazy. Rakoki had another one to 38,000 feet, which is in Russia again. Uluwun Volcano had a puff. I, let's see, Uluwun is in Papua New Guinea, right? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uluwun Volcano, 28,000 feet, but that's nothing, guys. Just keep watching. Aventador had another eruption to 17,000 feet. And look at this, Umuun Volcano up to 50,000 feet. Wow, on the 26th, 50,000 feet, guys. Then we had Sabankaya had an eruption up to 24,000 feet. Then Umuun Volcano in the Papua New Guinea area, New Britain, had a major subplinian eruption asked to at least 19 kilometers, 63,000 feet. That's a huge, I'm talking, that's a massive eruption, guys. That's that's absolutely massive. That's crazy. And then at Sabankaya had another one to 25,000 feet. Rokoki had another one to 38,000 feet, I guess. My God, look at this. Uluwun had another one to 63,000 feet, I guess, unless that's an update. Some of these might be updates from previous eruptions. But it's just pretty crazy that we're seeing a lot of these. Oh, and look at this. Uh, Kliochevskoy. Please tell me if I said that right. I highly doubt I said that right at all. Kliochevskoy volcano in Russia up to 22,000 feet, guys. Wow. Wow. Okay, so. Now the major ash clouds from the Umumun volcano split into 63,000 feet and 55,000 feet altitude. I believe they split in two. But as you can see from the recent volcanic activity... There has been a lot of large-scale eruptions on the left section of the uh, Ring of Fire. So, I don't know what's going on. Is volcanic activity increasing? Sabankaya ash advisory intermittent puffs of volcanic ash to 28,000 feet. Very interesting, guys. That is pretty crazy. 7,000. Let's see. There's one more I wanted to show you. Umuun Volcano, the one that had 63,000 feet, just saw one to 45,000 feet. Wow. And let's see, in the Kuril Islands, the Rakoke Volcano had SO2 gas plumes that continue to spread around the Northern Hemisphere. The Umuun Volcano, the ash cloud warning is still in place, but as, uh, blah, blah, excuse me, ash seems to dissipate quickly. The eruptions were pretty large, guys, the ones that are occurring lately. In Papua New Guinea, in uh, Russia, I believe, and even South America and Central America, they're still seeing some eruptions there as well. Do you know how lucky we are here in the United States? I mean, knock on wood, <laughs> but we haven't seen a major eruption like other places see for a long time, guys. I mean, what, since the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption? If you look at the rest of the world, we rarely see volcanic eruptions compared to the rest of the world. And let's see, most recent, doo -doo 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 -doo, little tiny ash plume at Tacona Volcano. Do, 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 do. Here it is, the Manam Volcano, which I believe is in... Where is the Manam Volcano? Let's check this out. This was just updated today, I believe. The Manam Volcano, right down here. Papua New Guinea, another volcano in Papua New Guinea. Ash eruption up to 40,000 feet. Okay, so really on the left section of the Ring of Fire, we saw eruptions just in the past week up to 38,000 feet. 
40,000 feet, 55,000 feet, and 63,000 feet. Those are some pretty large eruptions just in the past week, guys. And we have seen a good amount of seer. Let's go to world. We have seen a good amount of seismicity along the Ring of Fire. Probably not everything's being reported. I'm going to talk about New Zealand in just a second because it's pretty interesting what's going on in New Zealand. Apparently, they think one of their volcanoes might be ready to erupt as well. On June 26, 2019 at 2016, we got a uh, an article from stuff.co.nz. I'll leave a link to this in the description box as well. Scientists have raised the volcanic alert level at Wakari. Please let me know if I said that right. White Island to level 2 following moderate unrest, and it resides just north of New Zealand. On the New Zealand island, basically, but just right offshore, the island off the Bay of Plenty presents a greater likelihood of erupting. A GNS science duty op officer confirmed to stuff that the level had been raised on Wednesday. Volcano alert level 2 is mostly associated with volcanic unrest hazards with potential for eruption hazards. So it has not erupted yet, but it could be ramping up for a major eruption. You can see the crater right there. It steams like all the time. Uh, Wakari White Island is experiencing moderate volcanic unrest. The volcanic alert level is raised to level 2, and the aviation color code is raised to yellow. Our recent monitoring of the volcano shows increased levels of volcanic gas, now, that possibly shows that the magma is starting to shallow, which means it's starting to come up to the surface. GNS Science Volcano Information Specialist Brad Scott said the level was raised after data showed images, or excuse me, changes in gas on the island and the levels of unrest increased from low to moderate. A statement on GeoNet's website from GNS Science read, Our heightened monitoring of Wakari is part of the response to recent earthquake swarms that has shown an increase in sulfur dioxide gas flux to historically high levels. Now, as we're going to see on earth.noschool.net in just a second, they're not as high as the sulfur dioxide levels in Hawaii that constantly are put out. But for this volcano and for this area, it's pretty high. A gas flight today detected 1,886 tons per day of sulfur dioxide, nearly three times the previous values measured in May 2019, just a few months ago. This is the highest value recorded since 2013, and, oh, wow, and the second highest since regular measurements began in 2003. Further gas measurements will be taken as soon as conditions allow. Nearby earthquake swarms are continuing, although at lower levels than we reported on in previous bulletins. It is still unclear of the relationship of the earthquake swarms to the high sulfur dioxide observed today. Obviously, it shows there might be a little bit of magma, a little bit of magma intrusion going on underneath that area. Now, the change in gas flux represents a significant change in our background monitoring parameters at Wakari and is consistent with moderate or heightened volcanic unrest. As such, we have changed the volcanic level to 2 and the aviation color code is to yellow. Wow, guys. So, volcanic activity really is starting to pick up along the ring of fire. I have a question. How in the heck? Are we not seeing any type of really volcanic unrest at all here in the United States? Everywhere else, in Alaska, in Russia, in everywhere, everywhere along the Ring of Fire, you name it. Except if you look at where we are, there's just a little blank spot of no volcanic unrest at all. At all. What is going on? Why are we so calm here in the United States? We are so blessed here, guys. You have no idea. Because we could be down... In South America, Papua New Guinea. I mean, Papua New Guinea gets slammed with volcanic eruptions sometimes. But let's move on just real quick. Now, we're going to take a look at some of the seismic data from New Zealand just to see what they've recorded recently. Now, the Wakari volcano resides right in this location right here, just right off the coast of Taranga, Ta Taranga, uh, New Zealand. It's right in this crater right here. That looks like at least a caldera, an ancient caldera, at least in my opinion. It might not be, but... Uh, the closest seismic station would be this one, URZ in the NZ network, and we're going to take a look at seismic data for that in just a second. Now, here we are at earth.noschool.net. Uh, now, right here, as I said, right in this location uh, off the northern tip of New Zealand, right here is the, uh, the Wakari volcano, which they are saying is starting to show a little bit signs of volcanic unrest, just like many of the other volcanoes along the Ring of Fire, except for here in the United States. Knock on wood. <laughs> you never know when something will happen. Uh, we're on the 22nd, June 22nd, 2019. Today is June 27th, 2019. We're going to go three hours ahead. I mean, we're going to go three hour increments, and this is in UTC time. Just keep your eye right in this location right here and see how the sulfur dioxide content increases by the 26th, and it's still increasing today. 
Now, notice how it usually does put off sulfur dioxide as usual, like many volcanoes do, especially the ones that steam a lot. Normal, normal, normal. Looks kind of normal. Maybe a little bit heightened right there. But watch right when we get to the 26th. We're still in the 24th right here. Going forward, going forward. Not too crazy, not too crazy. We see some other SO2 plumes over here in Australia and also up here. Don't know what those are. Could be volcanic, but I don't know. Uh, going forward, going forward. Here we are at the 25th right here. Doesn't look too, too crazy. Then watch this. Here it goes. Keep watching that plume right there at New Zealand. Here it goes. It's about to start increasing any second now. Here it goes right there. Boom. Notice how it starts to become more purple. That is higher concentration of sulfur dioxide at surface level. And you can tell it is seeing a good amount of SO2 coinciding with earthquake swarms. And when you see earthquake swarms increased with volcanic gas, that's definitely a sign that possible volcanic eruptions are approaching. Not, not 100%. But there does also seem to be some sort of background tremor, as you will see in just a second. Now, again, the closest seismic station I can find any data for to this volcano in New Zealand is URZ and the NZ network. Let's go take a look at some of the recent seismic data over the past few days and just see what's going on. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with the most recent data stream of the past few days as of 7.30 p.m. or 7.37 p.m. Pacific time, June 27, 2019 with station URZ in the NZ network, 10 location code broadband vertical. Since this is a broadband channel, I added a one hertz high pass filter before I downloaded the, uh, excuse me, downloaded the data from the time series URL builder. So it got rid of the pesky background microseisms. Now, here we are on the 25th, June 25th, right? We do see some local earthquakes here. This does t appear to be a regional earthquake. Ah, never mind. That looks like, looks like a low frequency earthquake in my opinion. Again, they were saying they saw multiple earthquakes as part of an earthquake swarm as the sulfur dioxide content was increasing. We see two earthquakes right here. Very strange waveforms, some lower frequencies at the end. But check this out. As it started to increase, now these I do not believe are background microseisms. Let's check log frequency on. Now, some of them could be related to background microseisms, but I don't know. I do not believe that is the case in this case. I believe this is possibly caused by volcanic tremor, possibly signifying magma is trying to rise to the surface to create an eruption in some form. And notice we have multiple earthquakes. That's a regional earthquake right there. Multiple earthquakes. And also, let's go to the earthquake website real quick. Down near New Zealand, we are seeing some good-sized earthquakes. Let's go to the past seven days, magnitude 2.5 and above. Now, look at this. They have been reporting. Now, the Earth, excuse me, the volcano, Wakari, is located right here. And on the 22nd, they reported a magnitude 4.1 at 44.9 kilometers in depth, just south of the Taupo supervolcano, which is supposedly a supervolcano that resides in New Zealand, right in that location there. The Wakari volcano resides right there. Going up, we are seeing a lot of earthquakes along the Kermadec Trench near the Kermadec Islands, which will show up. And notice on the 27th, we had a 6.3 at 10 kilometers in depth right there. Now, some of these could be regional or teleseismic signatures, but not all of these guys. We are seeing some low frequency events associated with the Bukhari volcano or other volcanic activity on the island of New Zealand. Let's just check some of this stuff out, shall we? Now, we're still, now here's the 26th, the UTC day 26, right? When it started, right? Here we have a local earthquake right here. Dominant high range frequencies. I'm going to say maybe magnitude 4. Magnitude 3 or magnitude 4. Right around there. Multiple earthquakes. Some of them are occurring in rapid succession. And notice that the background tremor is still there. It's still there, guys. I do not believe those are just oceanic microseisms. At least in my opinion. At least in my opinion. We see a weird local earthquake right here. Very strange looking, lasted quite a while. To me, it almost looks like a very deep event. Very, very deep. Right here, I believe, is on the 26th at 1806. The 26th at 1806 would be the magnitude 5.3 near the Kermadec Trench, right up there. This would be the regional seismic signature from that earthquake right there. So that really has nothing to do with the Volcari Volcano. Could be connected in some way. I'm not saying it's not. 
But now here we are on the 27th. Remember how on the 26th and the 27th we saw an interesting increase in sulfur dioxide and seismicity as well. Multiple local earthquakes, guys. Some of the, that, I believe that's surface noise right there. Multiple earthquakes. These are definitely earthquakes. Clear PNS wave arrivals. And let's see down here. Look at this. This is the one that I thought was very interesting. Three earthquakes occurring within about four minutes of each other. And they don't look small, guys. They look pretty large. Look at this. Look at that. Very interesting, huh? That is very, very intriguing. And then we had a local earthquake right here. So there definitely is an increase in seismicity occurring near the Bukhari volcano in association with increased sulfur dioxide output, which definitely, definitely is a sign that volcanic activity could be rising for this location. Right here, we saw a very strange low frequency event. Uh, let's see, 1904. 1904 UTC, not seen anything reported. That definitely, in my opinion, looks like a local low frequency event. Very strong one too and very emergent. Almost reminds me of an emergent volcanic tremor event. Very strong too. Look at that. Very interesting, guys. So what's going on at the Bukhari Volcano? Why are there so many volcanoes erupting lately, guys? I believe that's a regional or teleseismic signature right there. Let's go back to the spectrogram. Notice how that low frequency background tremor, if it is volcanic tremor, is still there. It's still present. So something definitely could be going on there, guys. And notice we see multiple earthquakes right here. So seismicity is still ongoing for that area. That is for sure. And some of the earthquakes are very strange looking, guys. Very, very odd. Let's see. They had a recent local earthquake right here. As of about 110 UTC on the 28th. Remember, UTC is ahead of American time zones by a good amount of time. So, that's it right there, guys. Very intriguing. Let's keep going forward, keep going forward. I do not know if these are earthquakes or not. They could be. Very possible. I don't know, though. So, keep an eye out for the Wakari Volcano. We could be seeing some type of eruptive, uh, eruptive activity in the next few months there as well. A lot of eruptions recently, guys. A lot of eruptions around the Ring of Fire lately. We are very lucky where we're at right here. Very, very lucky. Just zoom in on some of this. Some of these do look like oceanic microseisms. I do admit some of them do kind of look similar. But some of them are very sharply peaked, which usually oceanic microseisms have very smooth peaks, at least in my experience. You know, and I don't have that much experience, but very interesting. There could be some volcanic harmonic tremor occurring in New Zealand. Let's go all the way back to the 26th when the sulfur dioxide increased. Notice we do see possible harmonic volcanic tremor in the background. Possible. Very possible. Very intriguing, guys. So what is going on? Now, I really would like you guys to watch out for on the Volcano Discovery page. Uh, I'll leave a link to this in the description box below, of course. And just keep an eye out. Also, Popo Catapetal, uh, Popo Catapetal, which resides just, what was it, to the southeast, I believe, of Mexico City has been acting just like Anak Krakatau did before its caldera forming eruption in late 2018. Remember how uh, activity was ramping up? I mean, it was erupting every single day, ash plumes every single day, multiple times a day, actually. Maybe even sometimes multiple times in an hour. And constantly, constantly, activity kept ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. Then eventually, boom, that's what it looks like now. And this is basically from the same exact view. And the entire volcano collapsed in on itself to form a ring-shaped depression called a caldera. And no, calderas are not just super volcanoes, guys. Calderas are whenever an entire area collapses because of a volcanic event, because it just basically implodes on itself, right? Well, Popo Catapetal, and here, let's search Popo Catapetil. Let's search that real quick. This volcano right here, which is, oh, what am I doing? which is right near Mexico City, is basically acting the same way. Activity is ramping up at Popo Catapetal. I mean, it erupts all the time. It's been erupting for probably decades, if not longer. It's been erupting a lot. But it does seem that bigger eruptions are happening more frequently at Popo Catapetal. And I do believe that the type of activity that is now occurring there is very similar to Anak Krakatau in Indonesia, 
before its caldera forming eruption in late 2018, which killed over a thousand people from the subsequent tsunami, uh, just in the dead of night. And I believe a lot of those deaths could have been prevented. Yes, because they do not have a good seismic network at Anak Krakatau, nor a good deformation network. And I don't know. I just think they, they could have done a lot more to set up monitoring at that volcano to at least warn people that a massive eruption was coming. But who knew that that was going to happen, you know? But you know, some of these things you just can't prevent. Look at that. That's Mexico City. Doesn't that... Look at this. Now imagine Mount Rainier in Seattle. Look at that. That's Mexico City right there. That's Popo Catapel. I don't know why the detail is so crappy. I think my internet just sucks right now. But yeah, look at that. Looks like Mount Rainier in the background of Seattle, doesn't it? Here, let's look. Mount Rainier, Seattle. Look at that. Look at that. Doesn't that look like the same exact picture? But this is Mount Rainier in Washington State. A volcano I'm all too familiar with. I see it basically every single day. And here is Mount Rainier in the background with the Space Needle. We actually went to the zoo about a week ago and we went across the 520 floating bridge and it was a perfect crisp day to see Mount Rainier right in the background. So basically it's like Mount Rainier has been puffing. It's basically like that. Increasing in activity, increasing in activity. If that was happening here, I would definitely warn people that a big eruption was coming. And in my opinion, Popocatapetal near Mexico City is ramping up for a major, major eruption. And it's going to keep erupting. I don't know when, though. I mean, it could keep erupting for years before a major eruption. But I just want you guys to be safe and be careful. Well, that's it for right now, guys. Let me know what you think of the recent volcanic activity with the pretty large ash plumes from 40,000 all the way to 63,000 feet from multiple volcanoes along the Ring of Fire. Let me know what you think, guys. God bless, and I hope you have a great day.